Hello, dear friends, and thank you so much for all of us. I am so blessed that we could all be here, gathered together, living in mindful expression, serving our God and walking in spirit with our Lord, King, and Savior, Christ Jesus. Today we'll do our affirmational reading for Positive Mindset, moving into the Gospels. We'll read today from our Day Book of Comfort and Joy by Sarah Von Brethna, her book Simple Abundance, and her rendition for Positive Mindset. April, the Angel of Months, Vita Sackville West. Perhaps it's because April is so full of dazzling daylight. Perhaps it's because the earth seems greener. Perhaps it's because resurrection is this month's signature. Is this why our spirits start to soar? Now the season of darkness diminishes as the season of light increases its strength in the garden. Primroses, pansies, violets, tulips, and lilacs burst with color. Each flower plant and bough bears profound witness to the power of authenticity. This month on the Simple Abundance Path, we continue to grow gracefully, creatively, and joyously into our authentic selves, awakening our own beauty. April 1st, 2021. Playing dress up, empowering your authentic self with fun. Learn the craft of knowing how to open your heart and to turn on your creativity. There's a light inside of you, Judith Jameson. Today, All Fools Day is the day that for centuries has been associated with high spirits and merriment. It's a perfect day for us to remember the importance of lightening up. A light-hearted sense of spontaneity is closely aligned with spirit. Think of the brother who makes you laugh or the friend who will call you up and ask you to meet on the, excuse me, on the spur of the moment for an ice cream cone. Don't you just love to be in their company? Light-hearted people possess the special gift, as dancer Judith Jameson tells us, of being able to open up their hearts to life and turn on their creativity. Perhaps it's because these special people still honor the child within. The sacred craft of knowing is one that we can gradually learn to nurture on the path we have chosen. Children love to play dress up. Think of the excitement of a little boy putting on his costume at Halloween or a little girl lost in the pleasure of exploring her mother's closet and jewelry box on a rainy afternoon. Today, we're going to play dress up too. I love to indulge in this pastime in the spring and in the fall when I change my seasonal wardrobe. It's fun to play dress up by yourself or in the company of an accomplice, such as your daughter or a close friend. But forewarned, be forewarned, however, with your daughter, you'll probably hear inquiries such as, do you still want this? Yes, you do. Look at your pared down wardrobe with fresh eyes. Small changes can have a big impact on your look. Try jackets on which different skirts and pants and see if you can't put together new outfits. Try pairing a lean tailored print jacket with a flounced skirt instead of always wearing the burgundy print silk blouse you bought to go with your navy suit. Try a white cotton one with a lace jabot and big cuffs. If you normally wear your collars up, try wearing them closed with a pretty pin at the neck. A new you. Why not? Now pull your hair back and see what dangled earrings look like. Get out your shoes. Do you always wear plain pumps with your suits? What about switching to wedge suede sandals? Work with whatever you got. Have fun with this exercise. Think seven years old. Think, what the heck? Gail Shi tells us that the delights of self-discovery are always available. All Fool's Day is the perfect day to engrave this wisdom in our hearts. And there you have Sarah Bombreth Knox affirmational reading for positive mindset from her day book of comfort and joy, simple abundance. Now let's move into the ultimate and forever day night book of comfort, joy, healing, peace, and fun. The Holy Bible, God's word. Today let's talk about sacrifice or better yet God's love and what sacrifice means to him. 
What might you sacrifice to establish or define your greatest love? Your love for God. Two concepts. One, in the Old Testament, God's people, believers, and the unruly people used to sacrifice the oxen, sheep, goats, and so forth. As God's people became more unjust and unruly, it displeased God because God is light and his people were moving in dark ways. God is love and goodness, not death and pain. So God had to make his word more sound in the heart of man. There is a story of character in scripture about sacrifice, the binding of Isaac. According to the Hebrew Bible, God commands Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. After Isaac is bound to the altar, a messenger from God stops Abraham before the sacrifice finishes, saying, Now I know you fear God. Abraham looks up and sees a ram and sacrifices it instead. Through studying scripture and seeking guided counsel, it shows that this was a test from God to show man his commitment to God, man's love for God through fear of his power of being the almighty creator of life. So when Abraham was so willing to go this far by these means, out of his fear of God, God knew Abraham truly loved his God. So God stopped him to save Abraham's son, Isaac. At this time, God knew in order to right his ch ch child, his people, he was going to bring salvation to the nations. So his people would fulfill his master plan on earth as in heaven. So his people... So... His people, they needed something or someone to show his people the true way of his word and how to live by God's word, an example of him being made of his image. Which brings us to our second concept found in the New Testament. Salvation in repentance builds God's kingdom so God's people will follow and gather in love with God's truths by actions, living in the hearts of ending sacrificial practices. God took the matter into his own hands and his own heart and love for his people and wrapped flesh around his own Holy Spirit and descended upon the earth. Christ is born. Salvation reigns over the nations and anyone who chooses to accept Jesus Christ as God's son can be saved. Amen. John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life God made the last living sacrifice of his greatest love Romans chapter 5 verse 8 but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us and when Christ rose again and Jesus, he walked in lightheartedness, in spirit, proclaiming all of God's words to show us the righteous path laid before us and laid out for us. Excuse me. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. So that Christ may, may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend all with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So it is to say, as in John chapter 15, verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. One of many proofs that Jesus is your best friend forevermore. Amen. God could have fierce, fiercely ended mankind of the first generation's betrayal, but instead he took what we should fear of our Creator and intertwined it in his with his love for us as this. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, says, And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Psalms chapter 
147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Giving us the greatest sacrifice of his love in his sent son, Christ. So we may live, walking in spirit with Christ Jesus, sacrificing our fleshy worldly desires of our own will to light our path to peace the world can no longer provide us, and build his kingdom on earth as it will be in heaven when Jesus brings us home to our heavenly Father. We too will have eternal life in worship and servitude of our Creator living in mindful expression of God's truths fulfilled. Hallelujah. So, with what we should take from our shared topic today, sorry, it's getting a little hot in here, so I gotta keep fanning my hair. <laughs> So what we should take from our shared topic today. In the sacrifice of Isaac, Abraham succumbs to the command of God to sacrifice the human flesh and ego for divinity and of greater self. As a pre-configuration of Christ, God's test of Abraham is to determine whether Abraham was willing to share Yahweh's later ordeal of sacrificing his son, Christ. This gives truth to the meaning of what the flesh we will sacrifice for our God, and Christ Jesus is our only believable truth in action to light our path to walk in spirit, leaving the fleshy world behind us. Always seek guided counsel, speak to other Christians, whom do immerse in continuous study of God's word for further scriptural reference and biblical characters of example of sacrifice. Letting the world go, keeping the Lord first in your heart, attitudes, and actionable works. Other scriptures in God's word in sacrifice and showing his undying love for us. You can look to 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, chapter 4 verse 8, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 through 5, chapter 5 verse 2, excuse me, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Romans chapter 5 verses 3 through 5, chapter 6 verse 13, chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, and chapter 12, verse 1. Also in Psalms, chapter 86, verse 15, and chapter 103, verse 8. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3. Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 9. 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 through 23, Luke chapter 9 verse 24, you can look to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, chapter 21 verse 3, Mark chapter 10 verse 45, Titus chapter 2 verse 14, and Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 speaks of letting the Old Testament about sacrificial ways go. Turning to the New Testament, the New Covenant of our Lord, King, and Savior, Christ Jesus, as God our Heavenly Father spank Him to do, and we can do an example of Him. I just want to share before we go today, dear friends, a few of my favorite verses. Even though we live in fear of God, being Almighty, we can love Him too. So first I want to share 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Amen. Second, I'd like to share Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. Amen. Also, I'd like to share thirdly, Psalms, chapter 136, verse 26. Give thanks to God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. And there you have our affirmational reading leading into the Gospels for Positive Mindsets. So glad we could be here together, living in mindful expressions, serving our God, Heavenly Father, 
and walking in spirit with our Lord, King, and Savior, Christ Jesus. I look forward to continuing again tomorrow and seeing us all here together living in mindful expression of our God and our Savior. Take care of you. Take care of me. Please be good to yourself. Please be good to others. God bless you and yours. And I'll see you tomorrow, dear friends. Amen.